All right, House Speaker Mike Johnson trekked to the White House today along with the other three House and Senate leaders where President Biden made his pitch for a supplemental spending package to aid Ukraine. Now, Republicans continue to insist that any such spending must be coupled with real border security measures to stop this daily stream of thousands of migrants crossing the southern border. Now, this discussion comes as the midnight Friday deadline for a partial government shutdown approaches, and Republicans in the House are, frankly, far from united on a way forward. And uh, we're going to be joined momentarily by Congressman Robert Adderholt, uh, on the, who's on the House Appropriations Committee. The, the House is actually voting right now. Uh, and I, I want to go to, to uh, another topic while we're waiting for Congressman Adderholt to join us. Speaking of uh, appropriations, where is government money going? Well, there was one uh, issue that rose to the top of uh, a stack of stuff. It's just hard to believe. It is federal government spending uh, money on trans-inclusive sex ed for 14-year-olds. Now, what is that? Joining me now to talk about this, Meg Kilgannon, Senior Fellow for Education Studies here at the Family Research Council. Meg, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you, Tony. All right. Trans-inclusive sex ad for 14-year-olds. Uh, I almost need a whiteboard to chart <laughs> this one out. Well, it's. I, I think you can sum it up simply by saying that when you fail to teach children about God's plan for human sexuality, and when you fail to teach people about how beautifully and wonderfully they're made and this beautiful design for human sexuality that God has for us, then you're going to need programs like this one that they're spending $700,000 on over four years. It's beggar's belief that this stuff actually makes it through the vetting process in our federal government, where you would think there would be one person at, at HHS who would say, hey, wait a minute, what are we doing here? We're supposed to be about health care. But this is, in fact, the opposite of health care. So this is for young girls who identify as boys um, to give them sex uh, education training so that they do not become pregnant. Right. So they identify as boys, but they're going to engage in a behavior that clearly makes them not a boy if they're the ones that can have a baby. So when you start talking about things like pregnant people, this is going to lead to some confusion like this, right? <laughs> because women get pregnant and they do that because they have sex with men. And so clearly children who are 14 years old should be avoiding the situation entirely, regardless of how they may identify, right? The idea is to delay sexual debut and to reserve sex for marriage. And there are all, there's all kinds of, I mean, we know what God's plan is for human sexuality, but there's all kinds of social science that points to the fact that this really is what's but best for children, th th right? Is to not have sex. I mean, this is nonsense. This is absolute, utter nonsense. And I'm, I'm, I'm quoting from the plan, the award description here. Youth who are assigned female at birth are at risk for negative sexual health outcomes, yet are effectively excluded from sexual health programs because gender diverse youth do not experience the cisgender, heteronormative teen sexual education messaging available to them as salient or applicable. It's a laugh or cry situation, right? I mean, it's beyond, it's beyond ridiculous, and yet you know people are going to be harmed by this. Children, vulnerable teens are going to be harmed by this. This is how— Your person— Yes. We're harming children in the process of spending money we don't have. I mean, we're $34 right. trillion dollars in debt, and this is why we have these, these asinine programs such as this. And, and, and here's another one. I, I got today, I actually got this uh, from the Department of Homeland Security, uh, because under the previous administration, we actually worked with them when it came to the faith-based and neighborhood partnerships. Well, here's one, a webinar, Disaster Mitigation Preparedness, Response, and Recovery Resources for Artist and Art and Cultural Institutions. Um, hmm. You know, where does this stop? I mean, it's like we have this endless supply of money. We're just trying to create creative ways to spend money. Well, I mean, 
there's a crisis on the border that I think Homeland Security could help deal with, and it wouldn't matter if you were artistic or not. There's a level of human suffering there that requires redress. Well, maybe they need a picture, right? Maybe they need somebody to draw them a picture to show <laughs> them how a bad of it is. Crisis at the border. Right. I mean, <laughs> wow. but, but this is it, it. It is laughable, but it's also, as you said, it, it make you cry when you realize that th this is just one of many programs that are out there that are harming teenagers, misleading them, and, and we're doing it with government money. So we're, we're being forced into this, uh, into this process of harming children. And this generation of children that you're harming are the ones who are supposedly going to pay the bill that comes due when we spend this money that we don't have. Yeah. I mean, this is beyond belief. Right. Uh, <laughs> Meg, I got, uh, I got Congressman Adderholt. He's joining us by phone, so I'm going to go over to him. Thanks so much for uh, joining us, and, and let me know what you find next time on the, the, in the government trough, okay? Great to see you. All right.